my ducks, my swans, welcome to the pond. My name is Dorian from group82music.com. I'd like to welcome all y'all in here. Welcome to the live, YouTube live. Really been liking YouTube, like everything is set up, everything we've had going on. So appreciate all y'all has been supporting the content. Appreciate y'all that's been coming to the subscribers on here that's been really coming in and sharing the videos and seeing the videos and everything we have going on with that. So thank y'all for that. I really, really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I appreciate that. So I want to get people in here tonight, whatever questions you have about the music business, what I need you to do, I need you to go into the question box right here and ask. I know a lot of y'all be having questions about the music business, have questions about social media marketing, having questions about things like that. So I want to go ahead and knock a lot of those questions out. So, uh, yeah, trading war stories, you in here wild. So I don't know if I want to do IG live as well tonight because it's a lot, but Brett Morrow, what's up? Right Chair Reynolds, what's going on? Welcome. Appreciate all y'all coming in. So whatever y'all have. What's up, G Wide Frame? Thanks for dropping knowledge. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Appreciate all y'all coming in. Y'all want to contribute, right? You can hit the super chat right there. Go ahead and do super chat. Do super sticker. You can do that. Or you can go right into uh um what's the shit? Cash app, you know. So let's add that. Add that. So cash app. Just in case y'all want to do that, give niggas options. Hold up. Group 82 LLC. There we go. Cash apps, Group 82 LLC. Can I pin this? Well, let me pin. Yeah, let me pin. So, cool. Love your videos. Please keep it up. Absolutely, man. I'm glad y'all watched the videos. What's been your favorite video so far? Like, what video have you liked so far? Why did you like it? What made you like it? And also, what other topics do you want us to hit? Um, we're always looking for suggestions for videos. Obviously, everything we do is going to be based around the music business. So, I want to make sure that when y'all come and y'all look at the content, y'all know what y'all get. You're getting music business stuff. There's a lot of places out here that has gossip. There's a lot of places out here that's on some bullshit, right? So let me know what it is that y'all really want to do, and I'll start um, I'll start giving y'all consistent value. Ming Ming the Puppy, what's going on? Matt Joseph, man, appreciate that sticker. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, for that $1.99 sticker. So thank y'all for that. Do y'all think I should go live on IG too, or should I just stay right here on, on, on YouTube? Y'all let me know. Let me know inside the chat. I'll go live, but... Please let me know what questions you have, everything you got going. Love the Shaggy video. That's the one that brought me to the pond. Yeah, the Shaggy video is very interesting for those of you that haven't seen that. So the Shaggy video, man, was um, was about his song, It Wasn't Me. And It Wasn't Me, if you remember, if you are like that age, it was a massive, massive record. And because it was such a big record, uh, everybody was singing it, and they didn't want to release it. The record label didn't like it. They thought it was fucking trash. You know what I'm saying? And so it literally goes through the entire story of how Shaggy got that song going and and gra grassroots rock marketing and and good music is really, really what made that happen. And obviously, once it happened, the record label got behind it. So go watch that video if you haven't seen that. Rideshare Reynolds says, if someone gave you $450,000 to quit YouTube and, and you group 82 business, would you take the money? Um, no, there's not even a lot of money. That's nothing the music industry video was crazy that was too that was um i was taking from a documentary i can't remember what documentary it was but in particular i don't know if it was named but start off with chester pennington rest in peace to him but it had a lot of stuff breaking down the music business and the music industry and and it gave a very good visual of how they do the royalties and the publishing and the masters and things like that which are things you need to be conscious about so um me mean the puppy go live on ig because i think more people are gonna join What's a great way to avoid non-believers? They bring me down. So Matt Joseph asked that. A great way to, to um, avoid non-believers, man, is you, you can't avoid them, right? They're going to talk shit. People talk shit to me all the time in my comments. And so I don't really give a fuck, you know, because I know I'm doing something bigger than just posting videos on YouTube and Instagram and just having a business, right? This is generational wealth. This is for my daughter. This is for my other kids I'm going to have down the line. This is for my grandkids, for my family. And this is for black people. This is for entrepreneurs. This is for independent artists. This is for anybody that's wanting to do something on their own because people inside the system told them that they couldn't get it done. So when you have some sort of bigger mission, it allows you to really put yourself in a position where you can make shit happen. Sherrick Smith, love the video about Suge Knight and how he understood the importance of having your masters. Absolutely. Appreciate the knowledge. Amen. Appreciate you coming through. Yeah, that Suge Knight video was really good. That was really, really good. He, uh, Suge Knight was damn near fucking genius, bro. You know what I mean? It just happened to be 
when you from the hood and you a nigga and they put you in a position where you're gonna have nigga shit, that it, it can get bad. It can get really, really bad. But shout out to Suge Knight, man. He uh definitely is an inspiration from afar. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go on IG as well. Uh what's the title of this? QA. What do you want to know? Sorry, for the dead time, no about the music business. Gonna add that title. We're gonna be here live on IG. Twist that up a little bit and boom, we're live. Um, My ducks, my swans on IG, welcome. Welcome to the pond. We're live here on, on IG. We're also live on uh, YouTube right now. So you got, y'all got any questions, let me know. Gonna put the cash app here just in case y'all wanna do that. All guts, no glory. I'm about to read your question in a minute. Give me one second. Um, they gonna let me know whatever. Rihanna B, what's up? Tyler, what's up, bro? They gonna let me write a comment. There we go. Cash app. Rev boy, what's up? What's going on with y'all, man? What's going on? What's going on? I know a lot of y'all been wanting to hit the lives. So here we are. We're live. You want to donate to the Cash App? Cash App's right there. Appreciate y'all for doing that. It means a lot. So um, all guts, no glory productions. What do you think about signing a distribution 50-50 deal without an advance involved, but you would get the right push and receive royalties on the back end of music chart and the billboard charts? So first of all, billboard charts is about as music industry as it gets. Those shits are rigged. They're tied into radio spins. They're tied into a bunch of metrics. They're all owned by the same people. So I wouldn't be so concerned about that. Um, I'm never going to sign a distribution deal because I don't need that. I already have my own distribution. And 50-50, it would, <laughs> for me to sign a deal, man, I wouldn't even do a 50-50 profit split because I brought so much to the table. Like, there's no way I'm going to just give you 50% of all the revenue that we're bringing in. It doesn't make any sense. So, Sherrick Smith, get the likes up for Group A, too. Appreciate that. Y'all thumbs up the live stream. Um, Wide Frame says, I love the 1 million plays plaque in the background. Thank you for that. Pound Town, keep your day job. Your songs are trash with toilet emojis and trash. Okay. So, so we were talking about earlier about haters. Like I don't understand how, and a lot of y'all don't be grown men. Y'all be kids. And if you don't like someone's music, that's cool. But why would you come inside their live and, and put that? Cause you understand every time that you give me engagement, that helps my algorithm that helps push my videos out. And that makes me money. So in essence, when you actually talk shit about people, you're actually helping them make money. In addition to that, do you think that I'm going to stop making music because you don't like it? You know, and I'm trying to wonder, like, what do you what do you do for a living? Like, I'm assuming that you probably like pick up dog shit for a living. And so do you want me to come to your job where you pick up dog shit and tell you that you fucking suck at it and you're terrible and you're a fucking loser? You know what I'm saying? Like, why would I do that? I'm not going to do that. I think if somebody just came to you every single day who you didn't randomly know and told you at your dog picking up shit and job that you fucking suck at it and you should quit. You should do something else. Like, would you listen to them? Especially if that's how you was providing for your family. Especially if it was giving you residual income, especially if it was leading to generational wealth, especially if you were inspiring people, especially if you had millions of, of streams coming and you had hundreds of thousands of dollars that you made off of that. Like, would that make you quit? So why do you feel like that you need to come to other people's shit and tell them that? Right. This is something that needs to stop in the music industry across the board. If you don't like something, that's cool. Social media, no one's making you come here. I'm not making you come inside my lives. I'm not making you listen to my music. I'm not making you follow me on social media. All this shit is optional. So I don't understand why, if y'all are optional with it, why you come in here and talk shit, right? Because the likelihood that you're doing better than me in life is just not true. It's probably not, right? You're not even showing your face on social media. So why don't you take that time that you spend on me and worry about making some money? Why don't you worry about your generational wealth? Why do you worry about your residual income? Because your job you're about to go to sleep tonight and wake up and go work for somebody who's going to tell you what to wear, what time you got to be there, when you can eat, when you can piss, when you can go to lunch, when you can go home, when you can spend time with your family, what you're allowed to eat, where you can live, where you can drive, and how much time you're going to have to yourself. Because you don't own your own time. But here I am. I own my own time. And you mad about it because you don't like my music. It's just a fucking ignorant mentality. And how does that help any of us? How does that help any of us? And this is exactly why... I don't judge people's music. That's why I listen to people's music. It's not up to me. I'm not a gatekeeper. If I don't like your music, that doesn't mean shit. There's other people out there who do like your music. There's clearly other people out here that likes my music. So why would you talk shit? I don't get it. I absolutely do not get it. And y'all got to cut that shit out. And y'all do this to, to bigger artists. Stop talking shit about people's music. You don't like it. Don't fucking listen to it. 
Period. You sound like a pussy ass bitch because we all know if you saw me in person, all six one, right now I'm about 262 of me, you wouldn't say that shit. You wouldn't do that because you're vaginal. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Here we all were. Uh, he's on the sidelines. Yeah. You know what I mean? People out here, it's just, just weak shit. Pure, unadulterated weak shit. Tyler asks, do you use TuneCore or DistroKid for distribution? I use DistroKid. They've been cool. They've been cool. I heard TuneCore. I hear really, really good things about that. But um, Tyler over here on Instagram, I use DistroKid. And I am Young Say Nick. How'd you go number three on the charts? Oh, no question. Okay. All right. I'll answer that. So the reason I went number three on the charts is because I did things like this. I went live on Periscope. I went live on Instagram. I went live on Facebook. I did this for years. I gave you guys value. I gave content every single day. I post multiple times a day. I'm giving content multiple times a day to my audience. And so when you constantly are giving value, because I don't look at my social media as it's for me, my social media is for y'all. A lot of stuff I post I already know or something that I learn like, OK, and this can help me. But I actually want to put this into the stratosphere because I know it can inspire somebody, which might lead to a change in the music industry, which could help us down the line, could help me. So I guess it is kind of selfish, but I don't look at it as selfishness. I look at it as like when I was coaching, I was coaching college basketball. Like, of course, I wanted to be a big time college basketball coach. I wanted to make money. But I was invested in those players. I was invested in those kids. It's the same thing that I'm doing here, right? Every time I post stuff that I think about what value are they going to get out of this? Not just so much about the clicks or about the likes or about the shares or any of that. What value are they going to get out of this? And if I feel like that y'all are going to get value out of that, then absolutely, then I'm going to post it. And once you do that for years and people can see that, right, when you ask them to buy something, like go buy your album, they're going to do that. And what I did is I packaged our album with a Spotify playlist placement. I knew that was the most popular service at Group A2 Music. So because I was able to do that, that allowed people to not only buy the album out of support, they bought the album because they got something out of it too. There's no robbery and fair exchange. So I was consistently giving value. And because I gave value, I had a pre-order campaign. People bought the album for eight, nine weeks. After that, we charted number three. And that's because I dropped on a Friday. I dropped on Thursday. I went number one. Mystics Media on YouTube Pond said, how much does it cost to get a song on DSPs? Every cost is a little bit different. It costs a little bit different. Sometimes bad says, keep grinding, bro. Salute. Thank you for that. Orlando Turner, your grind is noticeable. I respect the legacy you're making for yourself. Keep progressing, brother. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if y'all want to donate, cash app, hash, uh, dollar sign, group A2 LLC, you're on YouTube, man. Hit that super sticker button. Hit that super chat button. Appreciate y'all for doing that. Tadal ENT said, what would you say is the artist's benefit to deal with a label? Wish I had my shit together. I send you some money, but I promise I will when I get right. It's all good, man. Um, <laughs> shit, I'll be wiping my face with this, and I'm not changing it either. Fuck y'all. Um, but I'm gonna do it right now, too. Thank you for the dollar, Ramik Taylor. Thank you, brother. Uh, so the benefits assigned to a label is they can get you famous. I mean, that's that's that they can get you famous, they get you on the radio, they get you Rolling Stone, they can get you Forbes, they can get you on TV shows, they can do all that stuff, but they're charging you for all that, man. Like they're fucking, they're fucking charging you for all that. You know what I mean? So everything that they charge you for, um, you is are you really getting something out of it? You know what I mean? Stevie C, appreciate the five dollars, man. Dorian have learned from you, my friend, and has nothing to do with the music. Yeah, I appreciate that. Stevie C, man, you've been a real one. I'm glad that your health is getting better, bro. You've been a day one duck. So thank you for that, man. Um, but yeah, like they they charge you for everything. And since they charge you for everything, it doesn't make any sense. Like, why would I pay for stuff that you are making money off of? Like, when we're also splitting the profit, it doesn't it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, man. So, but a label can get you in places that you can't get yourself as far as marketing and looks. But those looks don't mean shit, right? The look might help you. That Drake verse might help you. But that Drake verse might actually hurt you, too, because you might not own the song. And Drake might say, I need all the royalties and the publishing. And now that might be your most popular song. You're touring off of it. But once people get sick of it, they ain't fuck with you anymore. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Um, value star. Hey, so I have a license and deal on the table. They're offering me 50, 50 words. You slip after. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't give legal advice, bro. Like, and I don't, I don't. Yeah. You got to figure it out on your, on your own. 
Um, this nigga said that we ran anything ran into anything demonic yet. So that's another thing I want y'all to realize, man. Y'all need to stop with this Illuminati shit. Y'all need to stop with this uh, cartoon character shit. Y'all need to stop thinking that musicians and rappers aren't real. I don't know who told y'all this stuff. I don't know why y'all sit around and think about that, but it's just not real, man. You know what I mean? There's there's demonic energies and negative energy and everything. There are people that sell their souls for money all the time. By selling their soul, they give up ownership all the time in every other business. So there's no reason for you to actually believe that and do that. It doesn't help you make so much. It doesn't help you make money. It's really idiot, really idiotic. Um, let me see. Mike Parker. I started the meme page. Orlando Turner, appreciate you for the dollar, man. Thank you for that. I started the meme page and been following your playbook. Do I back build my artist page by slipping in my music and some of the videos there from time to time? I would. I would put it in there. I would put your music in the videos. It's not going to get as many views, but people got to see things seven times before it starts to register. So about the time they see your music video seven times, they're like, oh, shit, I might kind of like this. You know what I mean? Or right, if any of y'all has ever watched like a producing video or a mixing video and you've seen them mix a song live, the first time you hear that song, you're like, yeah, that song sucks. I don't like it. But as they keep mixing, they keep playing it for the whole hour, you end up liking the record. So it's the exact same thing here. Um, Sam the Iceman asks on Instagram, how do we clear a sample? You don't need to worry about clearing a sample because you don't really have anybody's trying to sue you. So I wouldn't focus on that. If you can't clear a sample, you really want to work your way around it, you can replay it. Um, but I wouldn't focus on that. You know what I mean? This ain't no legal advice. I'm just saying, like, the likelihood someone's going to come at you, which they could, is slim to none. So I don't know why you would spend that money trying to clear a sample when you don't even know how to market the music. You don't know if it's going to make you any money. You don't know yet. So I wouldn't even put any time into that. Extra Kamza said, was performing crucial to your momentum? It was. Uh, well, I'm lying. No, it wasn't. I don't know why the fuck I said it. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't at all. <laughs> it wasn't at all. Um, building online, building online and being digital online, yo, that's like giving content on here has been way more, way more crucial. Mike Artis, the Russ video about meme pages is gold. Should I be concerned about the captions and things on the video? Doesn't matter. Yeah, you should be concerned. It's up to you. The biggest flaws I've seen with people on the meme pages is that you're just reposting shit. You aren't putting your own branding on there. Your own font, your own logos. Like, there's nothing that's separating you, right? But just a lot of these accounts, I'm not going to shout them out. There's a lot of these accounts that I take videos from or that they take my videos, which is cool, but they're not building a brand. They don't have a YouTube channel. They don't have nothing. All they have is a fucking Instagram page. That's it. So the moment Instagram says, hey, you're done, they ain't going to be able to do shit. So Cole Thart, what's up, man? Day one duck. He's been on me since, on me. He's been following me since 2015 when he was in high school. Man, you, you a senior in college now, ain't you? Um, Killer Symphony official said, I use Garage, man. I'm an amateur engineer. So it's a good way to program and record my vocals. Yeah, if you know how to use the shit, you know how to use it. It doesn't matter. So whatever software that you want to use. For those of you that are new in here, my name is Dorian from group a 2 musiccom group a 2 mediacom I'm an artist. I also run those companies. I'm a charted number three on iTunes, number seven on iTunes in the world, number three on the rap charts. Got millions of streams on Spotify. Um, and we give a lot of music business advice on my channels on YouTube and on Instagram. If you want to donate to what we got going on, go to Group 82 LLC on Cash App. It's pinned on both comments. If you're on YouTube right now, click that super chat. Click that uh, that emoji, the super sticker. Donate. That money comes in. So we appreciate that, too. Uh, wide frame. Wish, wish I found your channel sooner. Drop two mixtapes this year and promote it horribly. My album promotion would be hella different, you know, and that's and that's a part of it, man. You know, like wide frame. Don't be mad about that because you have to learn that. And I think so many people don't realize how much marketing is important, how much promotion is important. The music really isn't that important. That's that's for you. Like you got to knock that out. Like if that's if it's a problem for you to record the music and get the music the way you want to sound, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to do anything else after that. So make sure that you get the music at the level that you wanted to. But then after that, you got to spend all your time marketing and promoting. You got to have a plan. You got to have a story. You got to be able to give people value. You got to build a brand because no one's just going to go buy your music. There's three types of audiences. I want y'all to really pay attention to this, right? 
I want y'all to really, really pay attention to this. If you think it's giving you value, then hit the cash app or hit the sticker or hit the uh, the super chat if you think it's giving it value. But I want y'all to really pay attention to this. So don't write no comments right now. There's three types of audiences in marketing. You got cold, you got warm, you got hot, right? So what's a cold audience? So let's say that you're out, you're in a bar, club, and you nigga like me, you want a woman, you want to go home. What's your goal if you out and you drunk or you're high in the in the club, you find a woman? You want to have sex, okay? right? Here's what it is. Sorry for the swans in here, but this is very relatable analogy. So a cold audience would be you walking up to a woman you didn't know and saying, hey, let's go fuck. She going to fuck you? Probably not. Okay, There's a strong likelihood she won't. She'll probably be offended. She probably be, might be kind of scared. A warm audience would be, hey, how you doing? What's your name? Where you from? Buy a drink. You sit there, start having conversations, right? Y'all talk for a few minutes, five minutes, seven minutes. You get her laughing. She might rub your arm. You might rub her arm. Warm audience. 20, 30 minutes later, like, hey, you want to get out of here? You know what I mean? Okay, now you rolling the dice. She might leave with you. She might not, right? Um, yeah, PayPal is money at group A2music.com. She might leave with you. She might not. A hot audience would be somebody like, hey, we're going to the club tonight. You trying to meet us there? Yeah, I'll meet y'all there. And when she gets to the door, hey, where y'all at? Hey, tell such and such you, that you with us. Okay, then they come in and they come to the section and they in there. And you've already talked on the phone with her a few times. Y'all have already texted. And y'all sharing drinks. And y'all laughing. And y'all having inside jokes. And everything's going cool. And y'all dancing. And she's dancing on you. And y'all there for two, three, four hours. And y'all talking about each other, talking about other people, laughing, right? And then y'all go home, right? Out of those three scenarios, which one do you think is going to result in you having sex? Probably the hot audience, right? Well, a lot of y'all niggas out here be trying to get people to listen to your music with cold audience. Y'all be trying to fuck people as soon as you meet within three seconds. It doesn't work like that. You have to give them value. You have to give people a reason to fuck with you. You got to give people a reason to listen to your music. What value? What's in it for them? Because you're asking them to take time away from their day, from their family, from their job, from their responsibilities, from their TV, from the things that they are into, from their music, to listen to your music. Why would they do that? Why would they do that? You got to give them some reason to do that. And so that is the most important thing you need to be doing. Thinking about your cold, your warm, and your hot audiences. How can I turn a cold audience into a warm and a warm audience to a hot, which can lead to sales? If you thought that was valuable, hit the hit the cash app, hit the super sticker, hit the super, super emoji, super chat, whatever it's called. But y'all need to really think about that. Cold, warm, hot. Absolutely. Absolutely. Andre Brown on YouTube. When it comes to music business, there's still options for artists to be incognito or do new artists have to be easily accessible through social media? If you're going to be incognito, you're going to have to spend millions of dollars on marketing yourself in an incognito way. It doesn't make any sense now. The moment somebody hears something, they're going to Google it or they're going to go to Instagram. And if your account isn't popping, and by popping, I mean like optimized for reception and giving people value, you just wasted that. You just wasted that stream. Like you need, if you want to be in the music business, you're going to want to have a lot of fans, I would assume. If you want to have a lot of fans, then you're going to need to deal with people and have people find you. You can't get a lot of fans being secretive. It doesn't fucking work like that. You know what I mean? Posture Peril, appreciate that. Thank you for the five dollars. Thank you for that. Uh, let's go over here to Instagram, see what questions y'all got. Uh, if you have Jabari Cozy asks, what advice would you give to an upcoming artist who's trying to gain more fans but is unable to perform? Um, online, you need to be posting every day. You need to be posting and giving value every single day. Every, every single day. If you're not posting in value every day, then you can't do it. You can't do it. Matt Joseph said, unless you're the weekend. No, that's a good example. They spent millions of dollars marketing him. It was no accident. You didn't just randomly hear about the weekend. He didn't just randomly pop up on fucking blogs. They spent millions of dollars marketing him, okay? So I don't know why y'all be sitting here thinking that that shit's not true. This is how it is. They spent millions of dollars marketing him. And if you don't have the millions of dollars, you can't market yourself. Uh, what is this? LOE Clothing. It says, do you read any business books? If so, which ones? Um, I don't read a lot of business books, but I do like read business articles. 
obviously business IG pages, not a whole lot of them. I'm on, I watch CNBC all the time. It's like kind of like sports, right? My, some of y'all really, really into sports. Like, do y'all read sports books? You know, you just kind of like make it a part of who you are. And once you make it a part of who you are, it's a lot easier. You got 78 people here on YouTube. Appreciate that. 38 on Instagram. Jake Fine, do you think people should use a similar content format to yours if they want to grow and create? Um, it matters if that's what you want to do. So there's three strategies, right? So I just gave you all the cold, the warm, and the hot for the marketing. Well, now there's three strategies when it comes to social media. You got education, you got entertainment, you got erotica. And my strategy on my social media is education. So that's why everything is set up. That's why my content comes out the way that it does, right? But if you want to do something different, whether it's like entertainment or erotica, you might have to switch some things up. What you need to be doing is studying the people in your industry who are really doing well, who are doing well on social media, and just take their shit. Like, I took a lot of Curtis King shit. Right? I, I, I just took it. And I told him that. We had him on the podcast. You haven't watched it, go watch it on YouTube um, or listen to it on all podcast platforms. But I, I told him. I took his shit because it worked. You know? <laughs> and so, like, if you want to take my shit, that's fine, too. But, like, you need to find people in your industry who are already ahead because they've already went through all the shit. So, Killer Symphony official. So, Keekin, $5, man. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. He said, I just released a beat tape on Apple Music, Killer Symphony, the beat tape. Is it on Spotify? And that's something producers need to be doing. Y'all definitely need to be releasing beat tapes. If it's on Spotify, I'll go save that motherfucker right now. Matt Joseph said, I'm, I'm addicted to your videos. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, man. Wide frame. I appreciate that. How'd y'all find the videos, man? Y'all let me know which video popped up first. Which video, which video did you see first? I want everybody to write that inside the comments. Which video did you release first? You should do a live. You should do a live with Smart Rapper. Hit him up. Hit him up, man. Hit him up. Tell him I'm down. I went to his site. I mean, uh, he has some really good stuff on there. So I would absolutely talk to him. Killer Symphony. I'm about to say that shit right now. I always find it interesting which video brought y'all in. AZ video, Power 105, United Masters video. Your camera froze, bro. Um, your live Russ video. Excuse me. Old Jay Z. I will send you a video. I don't remember which one. Oh, that's wow. wow. That's dope. Somebody sent you the video and you liked it that much that you stuck around. You end up following. That's that's what's up. See, that's that's the um, so Killer Symphony artists, right? So this is you right here. Uh, new single by rapper. Okay, you know what? I'm about to just follow you. I just followed you on, on Spotify, man. Um, but. Like, that's the thing. That's where content comes in. That's where content comes in. Your content has to be has to be good for you to get people to come in like that. If your content isn't good, you don't you don't have a chance. You don't have a chance. Master P joint. Um, Jay-Z is the greatest video. My boy kept posting your videos on Instagram, always dropping knowledge, how to dig more into your page. The algorithm's on point. Dorian popped up after watching Nip Hustle, the great rest in peace, Nip. Master P video, Snoop Dogg, Fuck Death Row album. The video with white record guy in the record store looking at records. Yeah, the in music industry. Yeah, he's, he's a hoe for that. Migos not releasing music for 18 months. That's what's up. TLC video. Facts, fuck the industry. So yeah, man. Like that's, and this, I just want y'all to see like there wasn't one video that brought everybody here. You know what I mean? I kept putting out content. I kept putting out content, putting out content, putting out content, putting out content. When we're consistently putting out content, that's going to bring people in, right? You don't know which video is going to pop off. So just keep making videos, keep posting stuff, keep putting out songs. If you're a photographer, keep putting out pictures, like keep doing lives. You don't know which one's going to pop off. There isn't like one method to the madness like, yo, this is going to be the video that brings them in because you, you never know. You don't know which one's going to resonate with people because every video has its own nuances. Um, yeah, I already asked that question, man, about the samples, man. Y'all, y'all gotta figure that out. And some of this shit, bro, is just like not being a bitch. It just is, you know? Like y'all overthinking it. Y'all looking for distractions. I mean, if you like the song, put it out. If they don't, if they say it violates something, they'll let you know and they'll take it down, you know. But 
put out. Like I just said, you don't know which song is going to be the one for you. You don't know. You think you know, but you have no idea. Jabari Cozy, what advice would you give an artist who's trying to gain more popular? You got to post every day. Like the stuff I've been saying, man. This shit's not hard, man. You need to post every day. You need to post every day. You need to post multiple times a day. You need to give value every single day. If you're giving value every single day, people are going to fuck with you. Period. In the discussion. Right? Like my YouTube's growing right now faster than most people because I'm posting every day. Most people don't post every day. I do. I'm posting multiple times a day. I'm posting multiple times a day on Instagram. That's how my shit grew. What you got to do? Raphael Hughes, $5. Appreciate that, man. Just released a single, Ralph Hughes Blessing, featuring Kenny Sway. Not trying to be spammy, though, bro. Just thought it was a good way to catch some ears. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Ralph Hughes Blessing, featuring Kenny Sway. Ralph Hughes with the beard. Boom, here we go. I'm going to get you your 31 seconds, man, so that stream can count for you, bro. So that's 35 seconds, man. Got that stream for you. Congrats, man. You gave me some money. I made you some money. And just like that, he just made money from his music. Chico Fio, appreciate the 999, man. Super chat. Thank you for that, bro. That means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Technology is crazy, Jarrell Henderson. It is. It is. Dr. Zay, how much you charge for a feature? I'm not doing features right now, bro. I'm not doing features right now. I'm not doing. KT Error said, how much money is a good amount of money to put into IG Facebook ads for a new artist on a budget? I would start off with a dollar a day. When you start off with a dollar a day, uh, once you do that, like you'll start learning, right? So just be cheap. Dollar a day, two dollars a day, three dollars a day, and then build up and start adjusting from there. Mac, La Mac Joseph gave a very good piece of advice on YouTube. He said, use Track Lab for clearing samples by using songs in their library. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. That's track, track lib is pretty good. So T R A C T R A K lib. Absolutely. Um, Eric Mejia, what's the biggest marketing advice you can give to independent artists? What, what's the advice y'all think I should give? Got to post every day and give value, man. Uncommon flow. When should an independent artist register for BMI or ASCAP? You need to do that ASAP. The moment you have one song, you need to do that absolutely. ASAP. 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 Jadai and Collins, Coach Duck, absolutely. EMA Ministry and Music Official Channel. How do you sell music without Spotify? You know, you got to give value outside of Spotify. Like, most of my album sales came from iTunes, but I told people to do that, and I, and I gave value, so that made them go buy. Right? So you got to give people a reason to not use the platforms that they're used to. And sometimes you might not be at that level yet. Like, this time last year, I wouldn't have been able to do a 1,000 units on iTunes. I wouldn't have been able to do that, but now I could. Solo R&B guy. Does it make sense to should be my own music through my phone since I'm not that big yet? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't even know what that means. Fundamental understanding. Can y'all see my comments? Yes, we can see your comments, bro. Uh, blinds music. Can an artist give value by putting out music and being related or does it have to be educational? Listen, man, y'all are making this too fucking difficult. This social media shit. You niggas are on social media every day. What, what do you follow? What pages do you follow? You follow some shit, go look it up. Killer Symphony, $5. I just started my label, Keep It 100. All I do is make music. My question is, Distro Kid good as far as royalties are concerned? I've been good. I ain't had no issues. So, but, um, so yeah, so Distro Kid. Now, I will say Record Union to me was the best one, but they make you pay every year. But Distro Kid was cool. But going back to what I was saying, like, Y'all make this too difficult. Like, what pages do you follow? Just mimic the shit that you follow, man. Like, y'all niggas is on social media all day. Y'all niggas are social media experts yourselves. So y'all keep asking these questions. How should your social media be? Like, go look at the social media accounts that you use. That's what I did. I looked at the social media accounts that were similar to what I was doing. And I saw what they were doing. And I saw what I liked and what I didn't like. The same way you made music, right? You all had your favorite artists. And because you had your favorite artist, sorry, my damn it. 
protein shake shaker been over since we all fallen over. You all had your favorite artists. There's parts of their recording process or how they did things the way you liked them. And there was things that you didn't like. And as you kept doing that stuff over and over and over again, you eventually got to the point where you was making the music you wanted to make when you wanted to make it, how you wanted to make it. You, you found your voice. You know what I mean? So, so stop overthinking this shit and just put the shit out. Moving forward after release, big time size says, what would you suggest, excuse me, as a next step for an artist, just promotion and content? Videos, putting out videos. I mean, whatever you was doing to build people's attention and keep their attention there before, need to be doing it afterwards too. So, absolutely. Um, Natty Dreadlocks, 1973. I am in trucking. Your videos are inspiring. Appreciate that, man. Hope you watch me on the road, bro. Stay safe out there. Lock in. Hope at them, uh, them truck stops, man. You sitting there watching me, dog, and that'll, that'll be fucking dope. That'd be dope. Um, Y'all keep asking about these samples. Y'all see nothing over there on YouTube. But... KT Air says, how do you know what hostage to use and how much money invest in ads? I think you meant hashtag. Like I said, man, dollar. Spend a, spend a dollar a day starting off and testing hashtags. Like You don't know what hashtags are going to work until you start posting videos and using them. What are your thoughts on investing in music videos when you don't have a fan base? It's content. It's content you can use. You can put people out there. Now, don't like if you're just going to buy it, you, if you're going to film a music video, pay a thousand dollars or whatever it is, you post it to YouTube and that's it. Like, that's a waste of money. But you need to make sure that when you're making a YouTube video, you're making micro content for social media platforms. And then when you start doing that, that's going to put you in a position to make a, it makes a lot more sense for you to do a music video. Cause now as you're filming it and y'all are editing it, you're like, Oh, I can use this for this. I can use this for that. And now you're giving yourself 10, 12 pieces of content to use for social media. In addition to where you can tell people, Hey, go click the link in the bio, go watch the whole video. Um, Boom says, I want to put out a lot of songs out, but I have to do school to my grades. What's your suggestion? Stop being a bitch and just put the fucking songs out. Like, who gives a fuck about school is the reason you can't put songs out. Listen, there's always going to be some excuse. School, college, moving, work, kids, girlfriend, I'm sleepy, I'm sick. It's always going to be an excuse. Either you want to do this shit or you don't. Like, and that's it. I mean, seriously. Either you want to do this shit or you don't. <laughs> like, in, if you want to do this shit, you'll find a way. You will absolutely find a way. And there's nothing that I can say to get you out of that. There's nothing I can say to even coach you out of that, right? I had to find my way. I had a lot of shit going on too, but I found a way. You might sacrifice a lot of sleep, but you need to find a way. Tito Vitaiti, 19, said, no question here, but I truly appreciate your content. Thank you for that, bro. Thank you for that. Killer Symphony official said, Fiend told me he would give me a feature for 2000 Would you do it? Who the fuck listens to Fiend? If you, do any of y'all listen to Fiend? We're we going to take a poll, right? On IG and on YouTube. Do any of y'all listen to Fiend? Hell no. No. No laugh out loud. No, the fuck no. Who is Fiend over here on Instagram? No, laugh out loud. Who? No. You got to ask yourself these questions, man. You know what I mean? Like, why would you get a feature from somebody people don't even fuck with at all? Waste of money. Chico Fio, appreciate the 499 super chat, man. He said, do the rules for clearing samples matter anymore? Everyone is using them. It's hard to register songs without samples, with samples, with my pro. They have changed that. It used to be you could basically upload and register any song and it had a sample. No one really gave a fuck. They have changed that. There's ways around that, though. You can manipulate the sample. You can replay the sample. If you replay the sample, now you own the beat and it's yours. 
And also, bro, there's so many beats without samples. There's so many ways you can make original songs sound like a sample. There's really, somebody said, I listened to Fiends in sixth grade. I'll be honest, bro. I didn't hear about Fiends until I was in eighth grade, and I didn't listen to that nigga then. Um, so why would you get a nigga to, he's not worth $2,000. He's not worth 200. Like no bullshit. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful. A feature for me is worth more than him. And that's real. Uh, but like I, there's for when it comes to samples, man, there's so many ways that you can manipulate the sound. Now, why are you sampling music? You know what I mean, like there's so many ways you can make it sound like a sample and it's not. Like it used to be you only got those drums, that melody, that sound, that warmth from that record. You know what I mean? But now it's not like that. Like you can make that exact sound like that. And then once you get a sampling budget, you can probably get the original. But there's really no reason, man, to really be trying to, to get samples like that. Unless the beat is just that perfect. But then still, like if it's that perfect, then everything will align up. Big time side says, would you say as an upcoming artist to collab with others as much as possible? Fuck no. Hell no. Don't collab with nobody. Niggas is lazy. People don't have their IPI numbers. They won't show up to the studio. They won't send shit back. They won't, they won't do nothing. They won't do nothing. KT Era, how'd you go about getting merchandise made sold after solidifying your brand? We went through printful.com. Printful.com is a drop shipper. And when a drop shipper is, what they do is you don't have to have inventory on, on in your house. People order, like some of y'all order this week. Y'all order some True Support merch. Go to group com backslash merch. You can get True Support merch. And some of y'all did that, and I appreciate y'all doing that. And so when they order their T-shirts, their hoodies, their hats, that order went to me, and then it goes to Printful. And then Printful fulfills the order. They make the shirts. They make the hats. They get it all done. They package it up. They ship it to my customer, and they take their percentage, you know? So... It makes sense for me because I don't want to be a merch company. I don't want to be a t-shirt company. I don't want to have boxes of shirts. I got to move. I don't want to turn into that. All I got to do is to get y'all to buy. All I got to do is just sell them. So printful.com, I heard Teespring does the exact same thing. And we're doing stuff with Teespring right now. So eventually it's going to get to the point where uh, y'all be able to buy my merch directly off of YouTube. Hill Music Group said, how do you feel about Distro Kid? I already, I already talked about that. Distro Kid is cool. Um... Music guy, once Liz Luger had to pay $5 million, walk a mom, didn't clear the record. Yeah, I don't believe that. No one's paying that. K for B. This woman says she was trying to link after my song started getting streams, but didn't want to link. Hey, I don't know what you're talking about. My friend makes great music, but doesn't promote him. What should I do to help? Um, you need to learn digital marketing. Just for anybody in here who wants to be in the music business and you don't make music, you need to learn digital marketing. You need to learn Facebook ads. You can learn Instagram ads. You can learn Google ads, right? These are things you need to do. And if you start learning Facebook ads and Instagram ads and Google ads, you will put yourself in a position where you can start making consistent money off that shit. Like a lot of money off that shit. You know, and so once you do that, you learn all those things and Facebook, there's a website and y'all should type this in facebook.com backslash blueprint, facebook.com backslash blueprint. And what they do on facebook.com backslash blueprint is they walk you through Facebook ads. You can get Facebook ads certified. I got two Facebook ad certifications myself. Um, you go through there, you can learn everything you can about Facebook ads and Instagram ads, facebook.com backslash blueprint. Go read that. Go look at that. Google has their own stuff, too. Once you learn that, then you can do anything. If you do that, you can really, really help any artist and you can help any business. You automatically, Patrick Bradley says, you automatically get a Spotify plaque for a million streams. You have to request it to be made. You have to buy it. It's some jewel box plaque. So just like every company, like the same company that makes the platinum plaques, the diamond plaques, the gold plaques, everybody that makes the plaques goes through jewel box platinum and you have to buy it. You got to buy it. Um, but they go and they verify your streams, make sure you got what you said you do. And, and then they send it. Send it. I think now it's probably $300 or something like that. I don't know. What tips do you give for a tone deaf writer like myself? 
You're not a writer if you're tone deaf. Dr. Michael Ofiani, would you use an app for your group A2 business? That's such a vague question. No matter what the app does. Like this, it's, we, we do use apps. It doesn't really make any sense. Nick Corleone asks, do you use YouTube ads? I have not used YouTube ads. I think I probably will eventually, but I do not use YouTube ads right now. I use Facebook and Instagram ads. I'm not even running any Facebook or Instagram ads right now neither. So, but those are the things that I'm using. If you're on YouTube, hit the super chat, donate in there. If you hit that super sticker, donate in there. If y'all like the information, we keep giving information. We keep going. Uh, Cash apps, dollar sign group 82 LLC. So go do that. Appreciate all y'all that's donated so far and giving money. I appreciate that. Um, Patrick Bradley, thanks, bro. I watch every video you post on your channel. Keep it up. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Crossbow said, what's your favorite video you made so far? Uh, I don't know, probably the meme playbook video, because that, that gave so much value. And it's like, I'm excited to see who's going to do something with it. I don't think anybody's going to do anything with it. But I feel like that video gave, gave so much value. Like Russ goes off on white kids while, while giving independent artists a playbook. So I think that was a really, really good video. And then, um, so that one's good. And then that might be it. Like, I mean, I like damn near all my videos, but that was dope. That was like the main one I'm really, really fucking with. Main one I'm really fucking with. Ugh, excuse me. Six million Facebook and IG streams on my sales report today. What are you talking about? How do what do you there's no such thing as Facebook and IG streams. It's not even a real thing. As a former junior AR, former GM marker, I would tell people, okay, all right, bro. You just but y'all, y'all niggas will be typing shit and don't understand how any of this works because you want to give your whole resume. Whole resume. Mets831. Any success stories for those that have bought into your program? Yeah, self-made silo. He's probably at like 700,000 streams. Um, he's done a really good job. Um, there's a lot of artists that started making money consistently. They weren't doing it before. Um, the main problem I'm seeing is that like a lot of people, they get the services, but they don't do the work, right? Like I'm not for somebody who isn't going to do the work. Like if you're not going to do the work, this isn't for you. Group A2 is not for you. We lay the foundation. I give you the keys. I, I, we give you everything you need, but you got to put in the work, you know, and the music business is about busting your ass. And if you're not somebody who's going to be totally 100% independent and in every capacity, it's going to be very difficult for you to find success in this business, no matter who you pay or what you do. So self-made silo has done a good job. There's other people on our website got testimonials, but but he's like the main guy. But we're still trying to get somebody to a million streams because, like I said, it's a whole lot of work. Whole lot of work. Um, let me see. DJ Gant, man, been checking out almost all your videos, starting with your Spotify tutorials. You really be on point with your impeccable knowledge. And keep it up. Great work. Hey, man, appreciate that, bro. Appreciate that. Um, Midwest for an upcoming artist what social media platform would you put more effort into Instagram it's the easiest it's the lowest hanging fruit you can put that right there um, so you can do that. that that'll be good Instagram and you can post every day people are on it all day and it's not as complicated YouTube can be a little more complicated but I would absolutely use Instagram every single day every single day so, but well, this is cool, man. Go to group a2music.com. Go download our free ebook. I know a lot of y'all haven't done that. Group a2music.com backslash ebook. The ebook is how to get one million streams on Spotify. Go download that. For those of you that want a social media ebook, go to group 82media.com backslash ebook. Go download that. It's called uh, Three Social Media Strategies that Actually Work. That stuff will really, really get you popping. If you're on Instagram, come over here to YouTube. 
Go subscribe, follow on YouTube, share those videos, watch them. If you're on YouTube, swim across the pond, come over to Instagram at Dorian Group 82 on Instagram at Dorian Group 82 on YouTube. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Out the pond. Y'all stay true.